Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Measure What Matters by John Doerr. Ideas are simple to come up with. It all comes down to execution. Measure What Matters is a business philosophy written by author and renowned venture capitalist John Doerr that can be summarized in six words. Ideas are simple to come up with. It all comes down to execution. According to Measure What Matters, the ability to put ideas into action is far more valuable than the ability to generate them. Numerous startups struggle and ultimately fail, particularly as they begin to grow and scale. Why? Due to the fact that they are not completing the necessary tasks in a timely manner. But how do we go about completing the necessary tasks? We need to be clear about what we need to do and how we intend to go about doing it. Not only do we need to understand what matters to us, but we also need to understand how to measure what matters. And our author proposes a method for accomplishing this. OKRs. A simple but highly effective goal-setting system, OKRs, Objectives and Key Results, link strategy to execution by establishing a clear connection between the two. OKRs are one of the secrets to the success of Silicon Valley's startups, and they are becoming increasingly popular. In a nutshell, we'll explain how OKRs have assisted tech behemoths such as Intel and Google in achieving explosive growth. Afterwards, we'll look at how we can harness the power of OKRs to drive organizational development while also cultivating a positive, transparent workplace culture. Shortly put, we'll look at what OKRs are, why we should believe in them, and what makes them effective when they're carried out appropriately. It's a love story, really. It was 1975, and Dor had only one goal in mind, he wanted to win back Anne, his ex-girlfriend from a previous relationship. Anne was working in Silicon Valley at the time, for a company called Intel, when this happened. As a result, Dor obtained an internship at Intel in order to achieve his objective. All is well in the world after the couple rekindled their flame. The couple reunited, got married, and have remained happily married ever afterwards. While working at Intel, our author discovered a new passion, goal setting, which he has since pursued as a career. His passion for objectives and key results, also known as OKRs, grew even stronger over time. When Dor was working for Andy Grove at Intel, he was the first person to introduce him to OKRs. According to our author, Grove was the greatest manager who led the best run company and Intel experienced annual growth of 40% during Grove's 11-year tenure as the company's CEO. Grove's success can be attributed to his ability to set goals. Grove was adamant about the importance of excellent execution. OKRs were inspired by Grove, who originally referred to Intel's goals as MBOs, management by objectives. Despite this, our author believes that Grove was the inspiration for OKRs. Grove's gospel has been expanded by Dor since he left Intel to work as a venture capitalist. He believes that organizational goals, OKRs, have the potential to transform the way we work and help us get to where we need to go. Examine Google as an example of how OKRs are put into practice. OKRs and Google are a perfect match, according to the researchers. He met Google's co-founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin in 1999 and agreed to invest financially in the small search engine startup that was then called Googlebot. He, on the other hand, went a step further. OKRs were introduced by Door to the young Google team. Larry and Sergey were young visionaries with entrepreneurial energy at the time, but they lacked managerial experience, writes our author. For Google to truly take off and make a significant impact, Dor realized that the founders would have to learn to make difficult decisions while keeping their team on track. Last but not least, they would require timely and relevant information in order to track their progress. In a nutshell, Google required objectives. Consequently, Dor presented a PowerPoint on OKRs, outlining what they are, why they are important and how to put the system in place. An objective is simply something that must be accomplished. There is nothing more or less. Key results establish a benchmark and track our progress toward the goal. OKRs assist in channeling and coordinating everyone's efforts in order to achieve the desired results. Google's mission statement stated that they wanted to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Putting their thoughts on paper and making them visible to everyone at Google excited Larry and Sergey, who were both adamant about the idea. They intuitively understood how OKRs can help an organization stay on track, especially when faced with the pressures of competition and being a startup company. OKRs are still in use today, nearly two decades after that slideshow. They are part of Google's daily operations. OKRs, according to Eric Schmidt, author of the book How Google Works, were instrumental in altering the course of the company forever. 
Nonetheless, OKRs can work for anyone who is on a mission and in need of a little structural support, not just for businesses or organizations. OKRs, as our author points out, are not a panacea for all problems. The author asserts that they cannot be a substitute for sound judgment, strong leadership, or a creative work environment. However, if the fundamentals are in place, OKRs can guide you to the summit of the mountain. The presence of goals is essential for any organization, however, setting the wrong goals for incorrect reasons can be detrimental. Goals have gone berserk. Goals gone wild, an article published by the Harvard Business School in 2009, looked at a number of cases where people had engaged in destructive goal pursuits. Among the topics discussed were Enron's recklessly inflated sales targets, as well as the 1996 Mount Everest disaster, which claimed the lives of eight climbers. We were meant to be more aware of the negative aspects of goal setting, which is what this article was about. Goals are compared to prescription medications in the article, and just like any medication, they must be administered with caution and under close supervision. A warning label should be attached to goals, according to the authors because they can cause systemic problems within organizations due to narrowed focus, unethical behavior, increased risk-taking and cooperation, as well as decreased motivation. They argued that goals should be labeled as follows, may cause systemic problems in organizations due to narrowed focus, unethical behavior, increased risk-taking and cooperation, as well as decreased motivation. Dorr is the first to admit that setting goals isn't a foolproof strategy. When people have conflicting priorities or unclear, meaningless, or arbitrarily shifting goals, he claims that they will become frustrated, cynical, and demotivated. The problem is that an organization cannot function effectively if it does not have goals. One of the most tried and true ideas in management theory is the concept of setting goals for oneself. However, in order to motivate employees and drive performance, the objectives must be appropriate and set in the appropriate manner. We must set specific, challenging goals in order to motivate employees and we must have a system in place to track our progress on a regular basis in order to ensure that we meet our objectives. Dor provides us with the OKRs in order to accomplish this. Bono is on a mission, with or without you, but he will not be successful unless he meets his objectives. Here's how to set a challenging goal for yourself. Bono has used OKRs to fight a global war against poverty and disease, despite the fact that rock stars are unlikely users of OKRs. As part of his belief that everyone, everywhere, deserves to live a life of dignity and opportunity, he has launched a global campaign to eradicate extreme poverty as well as preventable disease. One of the most audacious goals of his one organization is to end world hunger. The first is debt relief for the world's poorest countries, which is currently underway. The next step is to ensure that everyone has access to anti-HIV medications. As defined by our author, audacious objectives are those that are significant, concrete and action-oriented, as well as being inspirational. However, they must also be within reach. In the words of Dor, set an ideal goal and scale it back to one step short of being impossible. Consider the Gates Foundation as an illustration. Their outlandish goal was to eradicate malaria by the end of the decade. However, they quickly realized that this would be impossible, and that it would place additional pressure on the teams involved. So, what exactly did they do? They simply pushed back their deadline to 2040 from the previous year. Their goal is still significant but it is one that is believable and attainable for them. Following that, we'll talk about how we'll go about achieving our lofty goals. How we get things done is one of the most important outcomes. The key results are the three to five things that we can improve upon, which will indicate whether or not we are getting closer to our goal. Objectives, according to Dor, are made up of inspiration and long horizons, whereas key results are earthbound and metric-driven. The specific measurable actions that must be completed within a specified time frame are referred to as key results. The metrics that are important to us here are revenue, growth, active users, and customer satisfaction scores, anything that indicates progress and that can be measured. However, there is a critical component to achieving outstanding key results, discipline. It is essential that they are not only specific, time-bound, and measurable, but that they also include mechanisms for quality control. Consider the following scenario. You own a racing team with a shot at winning the Indy 500, otherwise known as the Indianapolis 500-mile race. An unsatisfactory key result would be an increase in lap speed and a decrease in pit stop time. As an example, an increase in lap speed of 2% and a reduction in pit stop time of 1 second would be considered significant key results. What is the reason for the slight improvement in these results? They are both specific and quantifiable. One of the most significant key results would be an increase in lap speed of 2% and a reduction in pit stop time of 1 second. 
In order to reduce pit stop errors by 50%, you could practice pit stops for one hour a day for three months. These key results are strong because they include a mix of quantity and quality targets, which ensures that the team is not compromising on the quality of its work. OKRs are effective because they possess four superpowers. We can channel our attention and commit ourselves to properties, align and connect in order to collaborate, track in order to be accountable, and stretch in order to achieve amazing results. Let's take a quick look at each of them. Superpower number one, the ability to concentrate and commit to a set of priorities. Every time we make a commitment to something, we make ourselves unavailable to make a similar commitment to another thing. OKRs assist us in making informed decisions. It is essential that everyone's objectives and key results are made public, including the CEOs. The time frame for each objective and key result must be clearly defined, in order for us to remain collectively focused on meeting deadlines. It is recommended that a company tackle no more than three to five objectives at a time. Thus, all members of the team within an organization can maintain their focus on achieving a limited number of objectives as a group. Once objectives have been established, the next step is to identify the most important outcomes. This is the point at which we ask, what steps do we need to take in order to achieve our goal? Again, limit the number of key results for each objective to two to three. If there are any additional key results, the focus will become diluted. Dorr suggests that if we require more key results, this indicates that our objective isn't narrow enough or that it isn't properly framed. The success of a key result must be synonymous with the success of the objective, and as a result, we must exercise caution when developing key results. The second superpower is the ability to align and connect in order to work as a team. OKRs aren't just for high-level managers and CEOs to set, everyone in the organization has an equal say in how they are implemented. The transparency of the OKR system, as well as the top-down, bottom-up, and horizontal approaches to goal setting, distinguish it from other systems. Transparency is essential for the reasons listed below. When OKRs are made publicly available, CEOs can compare their objectives with those of their executive team and junior staff, and vice versa. Even though the prospect of making one's objectives and key results visible to everyone may seem intimidating, research has shown that goal transparency can actually increase motivation. However, while objectives and key results must be aligned with the organization's overarching vision, the process by which goals are established must be collaborative. When it comes to setting OKRs, DOOR recommends taking a top-down and bottom-up approach, with half of the employees' objectives being set from the top and half being set by the employees themselves. The top-down approach is one in which the directive originates with the CEO and then cascades down through the ranks to the lower-level staff members. The bottom-up approach means that employees working on the front lines interact with customers and product issues, identify customer needs, and communicate those needs up the chain of command to the CEO of the company. By imposing objectives and key results from the top down, employers run the risk of impairing an employee's sense of autonomy and creativity, which can have a negative impact on motivation. Ensuring that all employees have an equal say in the development of their own objectives and key results helps to foster greater ownership and responsibility in the pursuit of those objectives. Tracking for accountability is the third superpower. The ability to track goal progress on a regular basis is essential to the OKR system. Once OKRs have been established, we must determine the length of time that an OKR cycle will last. An OKR cycle is a defined period of time that aids in the clarification of when OKRs must be met. Organizations benefit from clear timetables because they enable everyone to remain focused on meeting deadlines. In most organizations, there are two OKR cycles running at the same time, one that is quarterly and another that is annual. At the end of each cycle, take stock of your accomplishments and determine what else needs to be accomplished. Following that, you can either build on what's already working or chart a new course. Dorr proposes that the most straightforward method of scoring an objective is to use a scale ranging from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. This will indicate the extent to which a key result has been achieved. A score ranging from 0.7 to 1.0 indicates that the goal has been accomplished. The range of 0.4 to 0.6 indicates that progress has been made, but that the team did not complete the objective in question. Furthermore, a score of 0.0 to 0.3 indicates a failure to make significant progress. Using a color-coded scale, Google makes this process even more accessible by assessing how successfully teams have completed key results. The color green indicates that the goal has been accomplished. The color yellow indicates that progress has been made, but that the team has fallen short of the goal. And the color red indicates that the team has failed to make significant progress. Scales, on the other hand, do not always tell the whole story in and of themselves. 
In order to be effective, it is necessary to combine subjective assessments with objective scores. Google holds monthly sit-downs where employees can discuss how they're doing with their quarterly objectives and key results, OKRs. Discussions are held about progress, roadblocks are addressed, and key results are updated as necessary. This tracking process assists teams in identifying what is going right and wrong, identifying and correcting mistakes as soon as they occur, and identifying areas where they can improve going forward. It's also true that if something isn't broken, it shouldn't be fixed. If everything is going smoothly and progress is being made, then keep going in the same direction. Superpower number 4, the ability to stretch for the unbelievable. A stretch goal is a goal that necessitates significant effort and risk in order to achieve. In the words of Dor, conservative goal setting stifles innovation. And innovation is like oxygen, you can't win if you don't have enough of it. But how far should we go in order to achieve our objectives? A distinction is made by Google between regular, committed objectives and aspirational, aspirational objectives, in other words, stretch objectives. Committed objectives are those that must be achieved within a specific time frame. Customer satisfaction, sales revenue around product releases, and hiring are examples of daily objectives that keep a company running smoothly. The completion of these objectives at or near 100% is required to ensure the long-term success of the company. Stretch objectives, on the other hand, are focused on long-term goals that are separate from day-to-day -day requirements. Stretch objectives may have a low success rate, but they have the potential to yield significant rewards. Stretch objectives require us to go far beyond our comfort zones, and while they may be high risk, they can also result in explosive growth if done correctly. But be careful not to overextend yourself. Determine the level of risk that your company is willing to accept, and then determine which high-risk, high-reward stretch objectives can be set. When setting stretch goals, it's a good idea to start by asking yourself, how can our team add the most value? Along with the question, how would incredible look like for our company? OKRs can assist us in concentrating and channeling our ambitions in order to achieve explosive growth. OKRs are important, but they are not sufficient in and of themselves. Introducing CFRs, the dependable sidekick of OKRs. Conversations, feedback, and recognition, CFRs, are acronyms that stand for conversations, feedback, and recognition. If you've ever worked in a corporate environment, the words annual performance review may be among your least favorite phrases, perhaps even more so for managers. According to studies, it takes an average of seven and a half hours for a manager to prepare and complete an annual performance review for a single employee. From a time standpoint, if you manage 30 employees, you will have spent a month and a half on performance reviews, on average. Meanwhile, according to studies, only 6% of human resource managers believe that this process is worthwhile. However, there is a workaround that can be used. Instead of conducting an annual performance review, we can implement a system of continuous performance management. OKRs, in collaboration with CFRs, are responsible for driving this process. Regular check-ins enable managers to provide timely feedback, assist in keeping employees motivated to improve, and deal with issues as they arise as they arise. Here's how we can put CFRs into action in the real world. At the end of each quarter, CFRs should continue to take place continuously throughout the OKR cycle. Goal setting, reflection, and ongoing progress updates should all be topics of discussion during regular meetings. In today's technologically advanced world, it's critical not to rely on a phone call or a communication platform like Slack to check in with colleagues. It is preferable for conversations to take place in person or via face-to-face -face video conference call. In order to make timely improvements, we must first understand what we are doing well and where we can make improvements. It's also important to remember that feedback is two-way, it's not just the employee who is under the microscope, but also the manager who is being scrutinized. A question such as, do you have any feedback on how I can improve my performance and make more progress toward my goals? Can be used to kickstart the feedback process. In addition, a manager might want to ask the employee, what do you think I need in order to be successful? Recognizability is essential for boosting morale and improving performance. It is possible to express appreciation in a variety of ways. For example, a typical Friday meeting could be used as an opportunity for employees to shout out to one of their colleagues for the work they have completed. Dor believes that recognition should always be based on actions and results rather than on people. Always make a connection between the recognition and the company's values and objectives. Instead of recognizing employee of the month, it would be more appropriate to recognize achievement of the month. Finally, I'd like to say. Dor shows us how to bridge the gap that exists between strategy and implementation. 
For those who want to be the type of person who takes action rather than just thinking about things, this book is highly recommended. OKRs enable organizations, teams, and individuals to focus on, align with, and track their most important goals and objectives. They push us to achieve things that may appear impossible at first glance. OKRs have worked for companies such as Intel, Google, the Gates Foundation, and more than 50 Fortune 500 corporations. Even rock stars are gushing over them. In the words of Bono, so you're passionate, how passionate are you? What are the actions that your passion inspires you to take? If the heart does not find a perfect rhyme with the mind, then your passion will be for naught. The OKR framework fosters both risk and trust, which means that people within an organization aren't afraid to fail as a result of its implementation. When we don't succeed or achieve our goals, we're often afraid of losing our jobs or getting into trouble, which is understandable. This creates an environment in which no one can perform at their highest level. However, when you work with the right people to create an open, goal-oriented, and purposeful culture, then magic is just around the corner. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.